this segment brought to you by Etherington and Vuckets. Welcome back. Listen Up is asking just how far should we go to accommodate the religious beliefs of people around us? It became a debate you couldn't miss over a proposal to put an Islamic community center near Ground Zero. But for Christians in Muslim majority lands, the debate over their freedom to exist is hardly noticed. Sometime in 2006, an explosion took place in Samara. The killing started by asking people for their ID cards to see if they were Sunni or Shia. And we, as Christians, we were an easy target because we are peaceful people. We'll hear more from persecuted Christians, but first, we ask Muslim leaders for their views on respecting the rights of Christianity. Imam Shamsi Ali is head of New York City's largest mosque, the Islamic Cultural Center. He's known as a moderate. Because Islam means submission to Almighty God. So when I do serve my Lord, that is the essence of my faith, and it is submitting my, myself to Almighty God in a whole sense. While he's been denounced by those who follow a more extreme form of his faith, he insists that moderate Islam is the only Islam. There is no such radical Islam. The whole idea of Islam is moderation. It is the people who hijack this religion who said, who, who make this religion looks like radical teaching or radicalized teaching. So that was not Islamic terrorists? I, there is no Islamic terrorist. And I don't want to call a Christian who commit terrorism as Christian terrorist. I don't want to call a Jew who committed terrorism as a Jewish terrorist. I don't want to be called as a Muslim who, if there is a Muslim commit terrorism, as a Muslim terrorist. But one reason why Americans are finding it hard to trust mm -hmm. the Islamic faith mm -hmm. is because it is well documented in countries that are Muslim majority countries mm -hmm. that people of other faiths, specifically Christianity, are persecuted by governments, by family. What do we say to that evidence? I may acknowledge that the existence of some uh, discriminatory, discriminatory act in some Muslim lands against minorities. But don't forget that discrimination happens everywhere else. Muslims are not allowed to wear scarf in, in French, for example. The law Ali refers to bans all children from wearing religious attire, including headscarves, in France's public schools. There is no sweeping ban on headscarves for Muslim women, but the French Senate has approved a bill that would ban wearing a full face veil in public an indignity which for Muslims is a violation of human rights. In Afghanistan, they're calling on the parliament floor for the death of Muslims who convert to Christianity. Is that wrong? Of course, if someone converts to other religions, the death penalty basically is not the punishment because we do believe that there is no compulsion in the religion. The verse of the Holy Quran is very clear. In Arabic language, it says, La ikraha fi din. There is no compulsion in the religion. And so each individual has the choice to choose of his or her faith. So, so you if, support Muslims if, converting to Christianity, as many Muslims are meeting Jesus Christ in other certainly. lands. I don't support, as a Muslim, I want them to be Muslims. And I don't support them to convert to Christianity. But I don't have the right to say to them, don't because it is about choice. So today's incidents yes, of persecution against people in Muslim-dominated countries who convert to Christianity or who are Christians as a minority, you believe that persecution should be stopped? That persecution is wrong. If there is no betrayal involved, okay? Um, if someone chooses to be uh, a Christian or a Jew, whatever, there's a matter of choice. As Globe and Mail columnist Neil Reynolds has observed, this is the central conundrum of contemporary Islam. Although Muslims who live in the West must implicitly accept the separation of church and state, Muslims who live in Islamic republics explicitly do not. Does it grieve you that your faith is so misunderstood on freedom of religion in an international area? 
Certainly, I'm very sad about that. Uh, and, but I have to say also that the uh, many misunderstandings occur in the mind of non-Muslims because of the mispractices of the Muslims. And then sometimes we blame the uh, Muslim countries in the name of Islam, unfortunately. But we didn't find anywhere regimes in the Muslim nation who really follow the teachings of Islam. How we are talking about uh, Egyptian regimes. We are talking about, for example, any Muslim land's regimes. You know, most of those are non-following, non-followers of the real teaching of Islam. It may not be real Islam, but the drive to oppress and kill infidels is real. Iran, 15 newly converted Christians are arrested in Iran, detained and subjected to harsh interrogations. Pakistan, two Christian girls are gang raped in Punjab by Muslim men. Indonesia, members of a Christian church are attacked by Muslim militants. They face a similar attack as they worship one month later. How do we stop the misinterpretation and the wrong practices of Islam? How do you, how do you police your faith? Education is the key word. And that's why we say, we say to our non-Muslim friends, give us an opportunity to educate ourselves and our people. You know, when, when you see a case takes place or anywhere, and you blame the whole community, it means you don't give us an opportunity. It means you, 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 you basically close uh, all opportunities for us to, to be involved or to involve in educating our communities. And that brings us to the purposes of the mosque. When Americans objected to the construction of an Islamic community center and mosque near Ground Zero, some Muslims well, cried religious persecution or Islamophobia. So Shamsi Ali says mosques are gathering places for the community, places of worship, and yes, places to educate on how Islam should be lived. Have you had to educate against radicalism here? Certainly. I think that if you look at study after study, the most recent being out of Duke University here in the United States, mosques in America serve not as places of radicalization, but of actually counter-radicalization. Hussein Rashid says there's little appetite for extremist doctrines in the West. And if you look at all the so-called American imams who are calling for violence, they've all been kicked out of mosques because they're extreme for the American Muslim population. They've had to preach on the internet, they've had to preach from overseas. When we return, leaving the safety of North America and heading into Iraq for a closer look at what Christians endure for their faith.